Hello, church family. Pastor RJ here with you again. Today is Holy Saturday. Today is a day of quiet reflection. As we, as we think about Jesus being in that tomb, right? His body is there. He has not yet risen from the dead. In that time, the disciples that were following Jesus would have, would have absolutely believed that this is the end, that, that, that his death uh, was, was finished. Everything that they had been working for in the last three years, this, this was it. And so as, as we put ourselves in that position of, of maybe can we, can we think about the fact that, that, that what this day held for them, we get the benefit of knowing that Jesus is rising from the dead tomorrow. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate that. And, and, and in this day and age that we live in today with this coronavirus and all that's happening, I want us to make sure that we remember that, that uncertainty in our world, uncertainty for the disciples back then, uncertainty for us now, can absolutely lead us to, uh, to, to not being sure where God is at in our story. And, and so today on Holy Saturday, what we know is coming tomorrow, we know that Jesus has never left us. He's never forsaken us. God is still right with us where we are. Reflect on that today and read these passages of Scripture with us today. Thank you, Marcy and Dorothy, once again for joining me in this. God bless you, church family. And I look forward to celebrating Easter Sunday with you tomorrow. Job chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Mortals, born of woman, are of few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away. Like fleeting shadows, they do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and, and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up on a riverbed, becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise. Till the heavens are no more, people will not awake or be roused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave and conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. Psalm 31, 1 through 4, 15 and 16. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. First Peter 4, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourself also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human, evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living in the heap abuse on you. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, 
even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regards to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Matthew 27, verses 57 through 66. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled the big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite of the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been risen from the dead. This last deception will be worse than his first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard.